ringing the bell, and we're winner, live, winner. everybody. Winner, winner. <laughs> Welcome to Speak Up Monday. We're here every Monday at Tropical Nomad here in, in Changu. It's always free. No need to RSVP. You can come be part of the studio audience. And as you know, this is episode number 366. Come on. Get it. Come on. Get it. Oh, yeah. Come get it. So tonight, uh, we have Health Hub Bali once a month. Uh, it's called The Future of Health Now. And we have a wonderful guest, uh, Mr. Tyler Tolman. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. Thank you all. Uh, curated by Tracy over here, Tracy G from Health Hub Bali, um, which we'll go into a little, in a little bit more detail uh, in, in, a, in a moment. But tonight is about, well, the title is about detoxing, right? But we're going to be talking about that and many other things. You're going to find it very um, informative. And just a quick personal story about 20 years ago, I think it was about 20 years ago, in Sydney, I met your dad, right? Don Tolman, who is an, another incredible, incredible man. And he was the first one to introduce to me this concept of food as medicine, you know, this concept of, you know, ancient wisdom is wrapped up in simplicity that people often miss. And he was able to always, anytime I heard him speak, was able to bring this, what is complex for other people, into very simple actions uh, for people to follow to claim their health, to become their own physician, as you mentioned on, on, on your website. So... If you are here in the audience or you're at home, make sure you have like a pen, piece of paper or a phone because there will be some really um, simple instructions that will probably, they'll probably go past you. But it's really important that you do pay attention because they really are nuggets of gold, nuggets of wisdom. So I'll stop talking and ask you for the people maybe who don't know who you are or don't know your background, maybe just give us a a couple of minutes to let us know about you and how you've come to this point. Yep, rock on. Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler Tolman. He mentioned my father about 20 years ago, Don Tolman. They call him the Indiana Jones of whole food medicine. He wears a cowboy hat. He's got this funny mustache. You can't forget him if you've ever met him. Absolutely amazing guy. Um, I was raised by my mother uh, as the youngest of three and born and raised in the United States in a standard city. It's called Spokane, Washington. We called it Spokompton. Uh, I went to a public school, so I had the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the pizza and the things, and I lived just like everywhere, everyone else. And uh, I'd say, you know, a big part of that was not really feeling the love. Anybody hear me? Not really feeling the love. I was a very outgoing kid, had lots of energy. I was told to sit down, kind of shut up, you know, get in line, do your thing. And I was, I was a bit of a rebel as a kid. And I would just say, to try to hopefully make this short, nothing I do is short, by the way. Good. Uh, about 12 years old, um, I was smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, and doing really stupid things. Because uh, my father figure was my older brother. He was three years older. So at 12, he was 15, getting into that stuff. I did it with him. My mother caught me smoking a cigarette under the back porch deck. And she's like, oh, I, I think I need to send you to go stay with your father for a positive influence. So I was like, okay, great, get to meet my father and really get to know him. Obviously, he'd come out for like a week every year, but I got to know him. So I flew out to uh, this place called Salem, Missouri. And just outside of Salem, Missouri, it was a 200-acre farm. So he had 200 acres. He had peacocks, swans, ducks. There were seven ponds. And I showed up, and my life was just completely like city my whole life to something quite different. And I really took to it very quickly. Obviously, I didn't have access to cigarettes, alcohol, all these other things. And I would wake up every day, and when I'd go into the house, my dad would give me a big hug and just be like, son, I'm so glad you're here. I love you so much. Like, every day. And like, the next day, I'd go inside, my dad would give me this big hug. Son, I love you so much. I'm like, I know. You told me yesterday. Like, are you going to do this every day? Is this something you do here? Every day. But like my stepmom, my brothers, I'm one of 11 brothers and sisters. So you can imagine all these younger brothers and sisters coming up. And I just felt the love. Uh, my father took me out into a garden. He had these big grow boxes and was growing tomatoes. And he took me out and just like slowly like, I want to show you this. Like it was the most exciting thing ever. 
and he goes out and he picks this tomato and he's got a knife and I can see the excitement and he's like cutting this tomato and putting it on a plate and I'm just like, what kind of drugs is this guy on, man? It's like excited about a freaking, he's like, no, 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 trust me. And he like puts some salt on it and I remember eating this slice of tomato as it like went down my throat. Anyways, I had a completely different experience and understanding of nature and of life and getting up early and doing these things. And after about a month, it's a three month process, all these people started showing up in cars and caravans and different things, 200 acres. And I was like, what is going on? People getting out of the car, like massively, morbidly obese, people with cancer, people with heart disease, people with skin conditions. And I'm there at 12 years old, like, uh, you know, paradise fading quickly. <laughs> Hospitals that way, go away. But I was just a young, arrogant 12-year-old that had no idea what was going on. And my dad explained to me, oh, actually, for 30 days, we're going to be guiding these people through this experience of fasting and detoxification and healing and teaching them the principles of life and the principles of health. And I'm so glad you're here because you'll get to learn too. And he's like, do you want a job? And I was like, sure. And so my job was actually cutting the watermelons and making watermelon juice. And every day we'd get up early and about 30 people, we'd get up and we'd go for a mile walk out to this place, watch the sun rise, do some sun gazing, do this movement with our bodies called the physical culture taught by the ancient Egyptians and then come back. Uh, everybody would go off and do something weird. I won't mention it here. <laughs> All right, I will. Stick something up their butt and get rid of a lot of the crap that was inside of them. It's called an enema. Yeah. This world needs an enema. And so I was experiencing these people that showed up one way, and it was almost like this energetic shell of just emotional stuff that you can see as well. And I noticed day after day, as a 12-year-old, just the layers shedding, like physically, mentally, emotionally. And every day, people actually hugging each other and loving each other and being out in the sun and not scared of it and going for walks and drinking juices. And you'd be absolutely shocked to even believe that that person at the end of 30 days was the same person that arrived. Like they looked younger, they looked healthier, they had a spark in their eye. At the end of the 30 days, we went to a place called the Current River in the Ozarks of Southern Missouri. We all drove down. We floated down this big river called the Current River. And these people that were having a tough time getting out of the car were like jumping off of cliffs and playful. And it was like, wow. like their inner child had come out yeah. and it was a beautiful experience. And then I'd go back to Spokane, Washington for another school year. And then the next year I'd do it again. And so I had this dichotomy of traditional United States public school living and something quite different. And then at 16 years of age, uh, I was kicked out of school for a little bag of plants and became depressed, tried to get jobs, got to a point of suicidal. And I completely broke down. I called my father crying and said, Dad, if I can't live with you, I don't think I want to live at all. And he said, son, I'll have a ticket waiting for you. You can fly out tomorrow. And from then, age 16, I dedicated my life to being of service. I said, I don't like who I've been because I was doing really stupid things to people. Uh, and I said, I I'm going to dedicate my life to being of service and just show up. My dad was like the only person I'd ever met that had this life force and this energy and this vibrance. You probably saw, yeah. <laughs> saw some of that. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I just said, I'm, you know, I don't know what I don't know. I'm going to show up and just listen. And for about seven years, I just lived with my father or next door. And every single presentation, everything that he was about, I wanted to be about too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, after seven years, I decided, okay, now it's my time to go out and do these types of things. I knew from when I was 12... I was like, someday this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be running, this is what I'm gonna do for a living. So I just had these like visions when I was younger. And as of 2010, so now 13 years ago, uh, I started running fasting and detoxification retreats here in Bali. I first started running them in Australia. Bali's definitely better, <laughs> a lot easier, tropical, yeah. just so many you know things that make it much easier. Uh, that's a, a long explanation, but so with 2010, I started running seven-day fasting programs and teaching all these basic principles and seeing massive transformation, but it's called the seven-day self-care adventure. So we'd go whitewater rafting, we'd go high ropes course, we'd go do all these fun things, riding four-wheelers, but just drinking, smashing juice, 
and being busy having fun so you weren't thinking about food and then just dropping bits of education the whole seven days so that when people left, they had an idea of how to detox, what to do, and then lifestyle stuff to prevent disease. But out of that came a bigger need, which was like, well, hey, I came here and I have cancer. And oh, I came here and I got heart disease. I got autoimmune conditions. I got Lyme disease. I got all these things and seven days isn't enough. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna create what my dad did and create a 30-day program and we'll do 30 days prep. I hired a, a fasting clinical doctor from the United States. So we'd look at people's bloods and make sure they're not deficient and support them. And so for 10 years, maybe a little bit less, I was running these extended 30 day programs for people with cancer. I had naturopaths, I have, you know, clinical fasting doctor from the United States. And I learned a lot. And we did emotional clearing, we did breath work, we did everything. My goal was, if there's something out there in the world, someone that says they can heal you know, the big C or any of these conditions and it seems legit, let's bring them in and have them do that while they're fasting. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that while you're fasting, every modality is radically enhanced. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that I believe that is because I had a chiropractor based in Sanur that had clinics all around Bali up until you can't be a chiropractor anymore. And uh, she wouldn't practice, she'd just have all her chiropractors practicing. But when I ran a fasting program, she would show up and practice for those people. And she would tell me, this person that's got scoliosis, this person that has these things, they could come and see me three times a week for months and we might get a little bit of movement. And in one week of doing it two or three times, the body just readjusts and moves while you're fasting. So. You know, I really like the science of fasting. We could go deep onto some of the studies and the science of what actually happens when you do an extended fast. Uh, I'm big on intermittent fasting. Uh, I, I love the, the basic principles. There are seven of them that I love to talk about as basic principles in health. So what we'll do, we'll get to all of those. Uh, yeah, you, it wasn't wrong. He said, you know, I might go for a bit long. I'm like, man, it's like a five minute monologue, but it's so interesting. <laughs> I thank love you, it. Thank you. It's good. Don't ask me a question. Yes. I'll go forever. <laughs> but it's, it's beautiful. And again, as I mentioned before, this ability that your family that I've met have is by adding that, that, that spark, right, to make something fun as well. Because, I mean, health, we often think that it's, you know, it's a serious thing, and it is. But as you mentioned, right, what I'm picking up is that, look, the body knows what to do. We've got to free it up. We've got to let it loose. We've got to infuse it with good things and support it to be special to, to do what it's made to do. But look, Tracy, coming to you, maybe just if people don't know you, a little intro to you, um, Health Hub Bali, and, and what today is about. Hello. <coughs> um, yeah, Health Hub Bali is a platform. We're here today. We're showcasing what Bali has to offer. And Tyler Tolman is our um, topic today. Um, normally we have a panel and a subject, but what I really like is um, just to share something from um, years ago uh, when we, I was um, setting things up here in Bali. I actually heard a podcast that was probably 10 years ago, nine years ago, with um, Matt Reinman mm -hmm. and um, Tyler. And what it was was about... There were some things in there. Can you remember what you would have shared? It was about fruit. Some things I always share. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so aligned with what Health Hub was about. And like I said, at that time, I didn't actually know that you were in Bali, but it was part of what I call the whole health collective and all the different points. And it was within, I think, eight, nine months later, I was back in Australia for a visit and someone said, "You just look at Don Tolman. And then it kind of started connecting. I looked at his work as well. And over the years, um, have kept tabs on uh, some of your work and what you're sharing with people. And that's what we're bringing together on the uh, program tonight is particularly in the last three years, the knowledge that um, Tyler has got and the information he's shared with the public, how to deal with, the say, the virus, how it impacts the body has been so logical and common sense and some knowledge that we all need to hear. So that was one of the first parts that I'd like to share. Mm. All right, so let's begin. We've already, already begun. Mm. So I think uh, maybe to break down what is detoxing, I think that might be a good place to start. Heal, yeah, detoxing and healing. Is what is you. detox? Who in here believes that detox is possible? Anyone? Okay, anybody think detox is a bunch of BS? 
Okay, sometimes you'll get medical doctors say detox is just a made up thing, it's a sales pitch, it's not actually true. And the question I ask to them is, do you poop? Like actual medical doctors come into my programs, they'll say, this is bullshit, there's no such thing as detox. And I'm like, well, do you poop? Yes, well, what is that? It's the elimination of waste. Okay, well, what happens if you're not pooping well? That waste builds up, right? So detox would be simply assisting the process and eliminating that waste because it's the waste and the toxicity inside of the body that accumulates over time and distance that ends up getting stored and interfering with the organs and the health of the body. Is all this sounding very simple, obvious? You know, it's not rocket science. So how does the body detox? How do we prevent? Anybody ever heard the word prevent disease? What does it even mean? How do you prevent disease? You have to look at the actual word, vent. Do I have vents? Yes, I do. I got four main channels or four main vents of elimination. They're referred to as defecation, urination, perspiration, and respiration. I poop, I pee, I sweat, and I breathe. And if any one of these channels get blocked, what happens? I back up with more toxicity. Okay, so straight away, what's the main channel of elimination? Defecation is number one. It's actually the system that the body eliminates most of the acids from the entire system. Okay, we have seven basic kind of systems of the body. You guys okay if I go into this? Lymphatic system, please circulatory do, please system, do. muscle skeletal system, nervous system. So one thing that the medical system doesn't know much about, and it's actually the most important system, is called the lymphatic. Okay, because it's hard to track and monitor because it's like this clear, aqueous fluid inside of the body that moves all throughout the body five times more fluid in the lymphatic system than there is blood in the body. You think blood is important? Yeah. Well, lymph is more important, okay? So we got these two main fluids. There's three of them, but there's two main fluids, blood and lymph. What does blood do? Blood builds everything. My nails, my skin, my organs, every part of my body is built by blood. And every organ and every part of the body is constantly and always trying to regenerate and renew itself. So a cell is eating and getting nutrients from the blood, but that same cell that's getting the nutrients is also has that system of elimination. Essentially, you could say it's pooping. But every cell in your body, trillions of which we have, are getting rid of a little bit of acid. A little bit of what? Acid. 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 Exactly. And those acids are what we want to get rid of. It's the lymph system that carries those acids from the brain, from the thyroid, from every portion of the body to the colon. Okay, they actually all gathers around the belly button. There's a little place called the cisterna chile where all these acids build up and then they're dumped through channels into the colon. So if my colon gets backed up, full of crap, what happens to these channels trying to dump acids from my heart, trying to dump acids from my brain, from my liver, from all these places. And in fact, every part of your colon has a specific channel from your liver, specific channels to a specific part. So if that part of your colon's backed up, now your liver can't detox. And so what's the problem if you have a, a liver disease, you go to the doctor, oh, you got a liver disease, what do you do about it? Cut it out. The liver's got a problem, the liver's diseased. And this goes all the way back to thousands and thousands of years ago, somebody by the name of Hippocrates, who says all disease begins in the gut. He's the one of the original physicians that's recognized, because he was from the West, right? Trained in Egypt for seven years and became a physician. The original physicians were in Egypt. All the greatest knowledge and wisdom came out of Egypt. That's why Pythagoras, Plato, Hippocrates, they all went there and learned and brought the wisdom back. So this is getting back to kind of basics. And I just wanted to explain a little bit about these systems because if we want to prevent disease every day, I need to wake up and do the things that are going to make sure defecation's working. I wake up, I drink water, I go for a walk, and I go poop. That's what health is. And yet it's so simple that we forget Life becomes so comfortable, like water, you know, I, I'm waking up and I'm tired, I'm going to have a coffee. Well, coffee's uh, going to dry you up even further. And if we're not walking, walking is that 
simple motion that massages the digestive system, gets everything moving, and activates this simple process of going poop. And, you know, people don't like talking shit too often. It's my favorite subject. And I don't know if I can even say that word. Just let me know. <laughs> you did. So it's too beep, late. But beep, you can. Beep. It's only live television. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just say beep. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So... I think you guys get where I'm coming from. I do like to bring it back to the simplicity and what we can do to live a really healthy life because when you talk to the average person, we're told by the medical system, it's okay if you poop maybe only once every couple of days. And some people will go to the hospital and be like, oh, you know, sometimes I don't poop for a week. And they're like, oh, well, you know, that's maybe a problem here. Take some diuretics. You know, so there's always these things that, hey, you know, if you're backed up and you take diuretics, it's gonna help, but is that the solution? You know, what's the solution is the actual education. And so people need to know how often they should poop. Do you want to know how often you should poop? Anyone interested? <laughs> okay. Well, there's a natural process that when you eat a meal and it fills up your stomach, it sends signals to the brain and it tells your body to move a little bit to make room for the next bit that's coming in that fills up your sigmoid. And then you feel the urge to go poop and you have to go poop. So how often should you poop? Every time you fill your stomach with a meal, within one to two hours, you should have the urge to go poop. Now assess yourself, do I eat a meal within two hours, go poop? If you say no, then there's a, a level of constipation that's happening for the main channel of elimination to prevent disease. And if you get that, everything changes. That simple number one channel, because the, the colon gets backed up, then the liver starts to have problems, and we got to understand that these are all systems of elimination. So if this elimination is not working, well, maybe my urinary system is now overloaded, now I start having kidney problems. Or I got a skin condition, that's a system of elimination. Your skin is the largest organ the body has, and it's eliminating toxins. So if I have any rash or growth anywhere on the skin, it's not random. It's not like, oh, I just got a skin tag. Oh, I just got a mole growing here. Oh, it's just random. I'll just cut it off. No, that's a specific channel and line energetically trying to tell you what's happening inside of your body. There's something growing on your skin. There's something growing inside. And it's your body saying, hello, start to take notice. Because if this isn't eliminating the toxins through the pooper, then all that toxicity that's backing up eventually has to come out of the skin. Now I got psoriasis, now I got eczema, now I got these problems. Respiratory system is one of the last levels of elimination, but it's constantly getting rid of massive amounts of acid. Every time I exhale, a lot of acid is coming out, that carbonic acid, waste products of the cells, cellular respiration. So if all of a sudden I get a cough and I get an issue where I'm getting phlegmy and stuff going on or lung cancer, these are the harder things to deal with and we need to understand that if I got a lung issue, if I got asthma, if I got a cough, I have any, like, you meet people <coughs> just always coffee and mucusy stuff. And this is the problem with our current society is you got a lung problem, what do we do for the lungs? Well, wait a second, what do we do for the channel of the first channel of elimination, then the second, then the third, and so support that's, the that's whole body? That's the art of healing then you're talking. Yes, art of healing. And, and making it simple and gaining an understanding. And so for these channels of elimination, when you fast, the word fast means you heal fast. My father actually said there is fast, faster, and fastest. There are three ways to heal. One level is fast is actually fruit because fruit is astringent it's hydrating, it's high in antioxidants. It's one of the main things that moves the lymphatic system. So if you only eat fruit, and I know a lot of people have a tough time with this, because if you're eating some fat and fruit together, you're gonna have problems, okay? Because then you get high blood sugar and you got all the candida and all kinds of stuff going on. But if you eat only fruit, it starts to hydrate and clear everything out. That's called fast. So if you're sick, you can fast. Or if you wanna go faster, you can use juices. Okay, because fruit moves fast through the digestive system. The faster it happens, the less energy my body has to work. My body can cleanse. Uh, the body heals itself. It's like going back to just getting out of the way and letting the body do what it's supposed to do. Number two is juices. Juices are nice because if you don't like fruit, you can have vegetable juices. You can have green juices. 
build your blood, so many beautiful qualities. And the fastest way to heal is water fasting. And there are things that will happen during a water fast that do not happen on juices or fruit. And this is some of the science that maybe I can get into, University of Southern California and Berkeley and whole biological laboratories, University of Chicago, if you want me to go into some of that science. Not tonight. Okay. <laughs> yes. What about dry uh, Very advanced. So if I ask you the question, like, how, how much do you walk every day? Okay, well, I walked five miles this morning with a baby on my chest. Yesterday, I walked at least five. Most of the days, I get five to seven miles in the morning before I start my day. So if I were to say to you, hey, how about tomorrow you go run a marathon? What do you think? 26 miles running. What do you think? That's your dry fast. So don't even talk about it. Fast, juice. Sorry, fruit, juice, water. You need to start here. You're talking about the Jesus fast, okay? Yes, and if you just try to go do dry fasting, you're completely missing it because most people are dehydrated and most people need these lower rungs of detoxification and building up vibrationally and energetically before they start to do the spirit fast type of thing. Spirit is air. So with, with the um, art of healing and the step-by-step, step, and we're just talking detox, what else is required with the detoxing to support the detox and the healing process, the fundamentals? For fasting specifically. Um, and would what you, I would say or is... Or would you suggest anything else apart from fasting for detoxing? Well, yeah, I mean... Defecation, urination, perspiration, and respiration. So detox in general. I just turn the, the, the volume up on the speaker. Thanks, Kuzma. Yeah. So if you want to start a detoxification process, you need to poop more, pee more, sweat more, and breathe more. It's straight up. And so no, you don't have to go do a water fast. You don't have to go do a dry fast. And we do dry fast every night. Right, and so you can extend that dry and be conscious and be like, oh, from you know seven o'clock at night, I'm gonna stop drinking water till seven o'clock in the morning, whatever it is. So that is the greatest way of healing every night. When we say do a dry fast, you know, a lot of people want to try to do a day or 48 hours, 72 hours. I don't recommend it. I recommend starting somewhere else. The way that we uh, support it is with these channels of elimination. And I'm sure a lot of you are educated. If you're here with this, you probably watch podcasts. You know that sitting in a sauna. The science of sitting in a sauna, what it does, creating heat shock proteins that identify cancer cells, boost your immune system, getting rid of all those toxins. Literally, the more you sit in a sauna and sweat, which I feel like I'm in a sauna right now, is, a, is definitely a great way to detox. Um, anything that's going to get your digestive system moving more is a situation of cleaning out and detoxing. How do we do that? Science would say fiber. Fiber is the most important. Uh, and they have actually specifically levels of fiber that you need. And they know that once you hit a certain level of grams of fiber, your chances of colon cancer go down, down, down. And when you hit a certain point of fiber, it's, they say it's like impossible. You can't get colon cancer if you eat this much fiber. And then all you have to do is look at, okay, well, what are the types of foods that I could eat that could have more fiber so I never get that or that cause me to have more bowel movements? And it's not rocket science. It's just a matter of looking at, you know, what types of foods. I'm a big believer that, you know, food is not just their nutritional dead components. I believe that there's a level of life force that comes from food. So if you eat an apple in its natural form, there's an actual energy and vibration and vitality and electricity that we're getting from it as well. That electricity is part of the process of the peristaltic action that takes place within the digestive system. So when I eat, there's these waves of energy that move through my entire digestive system and I believe and feel that a lot of that is from live food and the actual electrical energy. You could probably argue and say you could eat all cooked food, and if you did a lot of breathing exercises and a lot of other things for the electricity, it's still going to work. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is what are the things I can do to support detox, maybe without fasting? It's going to be your food. It's going to be walking. It's going to be hydration, these simple things I talked about. For fasting specifically, um, I, when you start fasting, your whole digestive system stops. Okay, and that digestive system is full of beep, that word, right? And so we want to get rid of that, and the way you can support that is with enemas 
or with going and getting a colonic. And that wisdom goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. In fact, the ancient Egyptian physicians went out in nature and saw this bird called an ibis, which you can see this guy named Thoth that has this ibis head, the god of wisdom, they call him, Hermes Trismegistus. They see this bird called the bird of wisdom and purity, and when it would get sick, it would actually go and dip its beak into the purest of waters, so it would only drink of the purest of waters, and where they saw the bird drinking, they knew they could also drink there without getting sick, but when the bird was sick, it would suck up these waters, bend over, stick its own beak up its bum, and give itself an enema, and then ruffle off its feathers, and they could see, like, immediately it felt better. And so they would do the same. They would t make these tools, and the physicians would take people that were sick, put a little bit of water out in the sun, put in a little bit of salts, natron, a little bit of bicarb or something like this, put it up the rear side, let it out. All this disgusting stuff had come out. They were basically just backed up and full of beep, right? And these people would immediately feel better. And, you know, I had this done on me when I was a kid. <laughs> Worst experience ever. I was super sick when I was like eight years old. And my, my mom must have called my dad and been like, oh, he's like dying, you know, fever in the couch. I feel like he's going to die. I need to take him to the hospital. My dad's like, just take him in the bathroom, give him an enema, and he'll be better. My mom, I was like literally delirious. My mom's like, come on, Tyler, like whatever. And I had no idea what I was doing. She's like, all right, you know, go to the toilet. And like I bent over, and she stuck this thing up my butt. And water, I like freaked out, but I immediately went to the toilet and released everything, and I'll never forget it. Like immediately, I had this energy of like, oh my God, like whatever that was, I'm never letting you do it again, but whatever that was actually worked. And so it's these simple principles of supporting the channels of elimination, like doing an enema. And of course, we need to know what we're doing. Um, but like Dr. Max Gerson used coffee enemas in Mexico for many years. He treated thousands of people with cancer. And a coffee specifically, organic only, because you don't want to put pesticides up there, he'd prepare it in a certain way, and you'd put coffee in there. And there's, just from your sigmoid, there's specific channels directly to your liver, and it radically detoxifies your liver. It increases something called glutathione S-transferase, and it supports your liver detoxifying which is one of the main organs for being healthy and happy. So anytime you're backed up in general, you could go through this process, but when you're fasting especially, because your digestive system stops and all of your cells start to clean out through autophagy and through these other factors where every trillion of cells has all these little buildup of accumulation of excess insulin, excess amino acids, things that are gumming up the organelles of the cells, they start to clean out on a level you've never experienced. So when you're water fasting, all the acid's coming out, which means you need to focus on defecation, urination, perspiration, and respiration during the fast. So my whole job guiding people through the fasting experience is to make sure they get up first thing in the morning and they're hydrating properly with the right amounts of water. They're hydrating through the day. They're going off. They're doing their enemas. They're coming back. We're getting out. They might be sweating. We're doing breathing exercises. We're opening up all the channels of elimination and supporting them. So this is using the ancient wisdom. Thank you for that. Yes. Now, the last three years, we've had a few issues in health for the whole planet mm. that have complicated things, and we've seen unprecedented uh, evidence yep. of disease and uh, yeah, different things happening. But what would you say using this? So I have my own beliefs here, but I'm going to try to keep this as traditional as possible. Uh, we've had exposure to this virus. The virus is a respiratory kind of focused supposed virus. What I've observed with people, because for me specifically, <coughs> this thing's like going up and down. Yeah. Um, for me specifically, because of what I do, I, everybody's messaging me about their problems whenever there's anything happening. And what I've noticed is it, it appears that just from the virus itself, that anybody who has an issue, their issue has become radically amplified. So if you got a problem with headaches, your head headaches get worse. If you got a problem with blood sugar, your blood sugar problem's getting worse. If you have a problem with cancer, your cancer's growing faster, out of control. Um, it, it appears that the virus is exacerbating. And, you know, whenever you have a major stress on the body, that kind of makes sense. Um, so I've run web events. Um, and I like just to say that this is nothing to do with the vaccine. This no, is it's to just do the virus. The 
specifically. So this thing called spike protein, whether it's from the actual virus or the other thing, uh, the body starts making the spike protein because of that. Um, there's a couple just natural food products that really help. One of them is called natto kinase. And if you just look up natto kinase and the breakdown of spike protein, uh, that's what it does specifically. And that's, that's natto, that's like fermented soy. And you guys live in a country with the best access to something called tempeh, which is essentially the same thing. Pineapple also has uh, a, a product called bromelain as an enzyme. And bromelain specifically breaks down and destroys spike protein as well. So, you know, sometimes there's speculation that if somebody's jabbed, well, there's not speculation, there's 100% they're making spike protein for a while, hopefully not forever. And then there's speculation that there's this shedding thing that's going on. So if anybody's having symptoms of that, having pineapple on a daily basis literally goes right into your bloodstream. It will help you to break down the spike protein. People are having heart problems, palpitations, any of the cardiac type of stuff, I recommend pineapple and uh, natto or uh, tempeh, any type of fermented soy. There's some really good science on it, so that's what I share as I go through all the details of the science. Um, and then we could talk about some of those other things, um, but I don't know if you want to. Um, maybe, yeah, not, not today. Just um, what I actually heard was, it's maybe not an issue now, but in the future if we have a similar situation and it's to do with vaccines, um, an ideal way to take the vaccine I heard from you was in yes. the mornings. Okay, so... There's science from University of Southern California by Professor Longo, and what he has discovered is absolutely genius. When we fast on water for 72 hours, there's a series of things that start to happen, but at the 72 hour mark specifically, every cell in your body is constantly taking things in and getting rid of things. After 72 hours, the cells say, okay, we're not gonna take anything else in, we're gonna only clean the cells out and they go into a self-protection mode. So at this university, what they've done is they've tested on laboratory animals, mice, you know, gold standard. And what they'll do is they'll take a, a super deadly dose of chemotherapy and they'll give it to mice, they'll give it to rats. If they give it to any animal, they die very quickly. They take those same animals and if they fast them for an equivalent of this 72 hour period, They'll give them a full dose of chemo or any deadly poison and nothing happens. So a mouse or a rat that has chemotherapy, a deadly dose is supposed to kill it, no symptoms, nothing. And so the same guy was doing this research for the pharmaceutical companies as a therapy in conjunction with chemotherapy. And this is what I've been using for years at the fasting clinic and with people that have cancer that some of them wanna go full fasting and natural ways of healing. Some people are like, I wanna do a little bit of both. And of course we support that. So what I try to do is work with the oncologist to design their chemo treatment in a way that gives them three days of fasting, then a massive dose of chemo. When I say massive dose, they use the more aggressive chemos when it's done like this typically. Um, and what happens is that three days of fasting also radically weakens the cancer cells Okay, because they don't have the access to the glucose, there's all these factors, cancer's pretty much dying on its own, and that's what Professor Longo says, he's like, actually in the therapy, the cancer's already reducing and doing these amazing things anyway, but then you hit it with chemotherapy after the three days, and people aren't having the negative side effects from the chemotherapy, and the cancer's already weak, so it's, it's so much more effective. So I've incorporated that into all of the people that I work with that choose to go down the chemotherapy route, and then when all of a sudden we had this jab situation coming in, uh, just like any jab, whether it's the flu jab or any of them, some of them still have mercury, methyl mercury and things like this, which are not good. You could do, and I was telling people all around the world, if you feel like you're forced and you need to go have it, or if you want to have it, maybe it's a smart idea to do three days of a fast and get your body in full self-protection mode and then do it. Amazing and give yourself a period of time so if there is anything that's potentially toxic, your body's not gonna fully take it on. Your body can detoxify it uh, at a much greater rate. Um, yeah, so that's the...
protection piece. Question for people here. Just a, a quick straw, straw poll. Give this man a chance to grab some water. How many people here have detoxed? Just raise your hand. Okay. How many people here have, have fasted specifically? Water fast. Keep, keep your hand up. Wow. There, there, there you go. That's interesting. Yeah. So what we're going to do, because I know there's going to be lots of questions today. So, so Tracy, if you can ask maybe the last few questions of, of Tyler, and then we'll go to audience for questions. Yep. Mainly what we were covering was detox for life, which I think you've covered beautifully. The other part of it is why health coaches matter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why health coaches matter. Um, anybody successful business? Anybody? Uh, so anything in life you want to do really well, you're going to need a coach. Would, who would agree here? Somebody that can look at it from an outside perspective and somebody to hold you accountable to it. Um, there's so much information I'm even just sharing right now. Uh, a lot of it's exciting. Maybe some of it's boring. I don't really know. If I had another couple hours to go into the principles of health and the basics and structure of like your daily lifestyle for healing. Okay, so for the last decade plus, people are coming to me because they're dying. They got stage four cancer. You know, they have major autoimmune conditions. They have the candida. They have all the things that people deal with. And if you have enough pain, maybe if I tell you what to do and I write it down and you write it down, you might do it. But I would say those are the one percenters. And, you know, that's probably not giving it enough credit. Maybe it's 5%. But when people have enough pain because they're going to die, then they actually do every single detail of what I tell them to do. And it works. And like I said, even those are still the few. You know, people pay me lots of money to sit down and design a program. You know, we look at their eyes, do iridology, we do sclerology, we look at their blood chemistry, we look at everything. And I say, for you specifically, you need these foods, this nutrition, this thing, this detoxification program. We'll look at you in 30 days and see if you're ready, and then we'll track you every step of the way. They're paying a lot of money for it, and they still get off track. So you know, eventually, what am I here to do? I'm here to provide the service to try to get people to the end goal. So I created a program where every person that comes into the program has a one-on-one -on -one coach. That one-on-one -on -one coach originally was somebody who's sick that came to my program and healed themselves and then went through my educational program to come certified in what I did. And so they've already, they know the process because they've done it. So they're working one-on-one -on -one with a coach, and hopefully a coach that had breast cancer, or a coach that had thyroid cancer, or a coach that had something similar, because then they have the moral support in the process that they went through, and then I'm coaching them as well. We have a 90-day program. Monday is education, Thursday is coaching, where we go through everything, and they're on with their coach the whole 90 days. And in that process, there's a massive success rate. And, you know, because when people have the pain, they show up, they pay the money, and they do it. But there's a massive success rate with the support. We need coaches who can look at it from an outside perspective. And when the emotional stuff comes up, somebody you can reach out to, somebody you can be accountable to. You know, if I'm going to go lift weights, I'm like, eh, I'm a little bit tired, you know, whatever. If there's a coach standing there, I'm like, okay, I got my form. I'm going to do the things, and he's going to push me to do a couple more. Right? If I have a coach, if I have a trainer, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do better. It's just, it's like that with everything. And so somebody who's a, you know, call them a master yeah, nutrition it's, coach. It's probably like um, digesting all the information because what Tyler runs are events to educate people. But then how do you use this information? And it's yep. one of Tyler. But there's a whole lot of coaches that yeah. are trained and certified to guide and navigate people through these journeys, plus an online system as well. Yeah. So what we're talking about is Detox for Life. Mm. It's a whole health project and it's based here in Bali. When, when Tyler's talking about 90 days, we say, and we're talking to people overseas, if you have a diagnosis and they say you have two months to live, we say get out of wherever you are, come to Bali, we have um, access to hospitals here where you can get the proper testing. We can put programs together for you. In 120 days, your blood cells are all changed. And that's they've already said that you don't have any options. So yeah. what have you got to lose? 90 days to completely regenerate your liver. So that's why it's 90 days. Because if you can go 90 days, your liver regenerates, you're a completely different person. 
So 120 days, even better. And if you can get somebody to do something for 90 days, they'll most likely keep doing it, especially with maybe a little bit of support. Love it, brother. Yeah. Now, um, any last questions before we go to the audience? I think everyone's yep. question. We can go. Good. So what we'll do, um, Sister Ayu, uh, we'll grab the, or Guzman will grab this microphone from Tracy. Yeah. And if you just make sure that Instagram Live is working on the uh, speak up. Wonderful. Great. Thank you very much. Th 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 thank you, my brother. So, um, question. So what we're going to do, remember, with these mics, point them at your mouth. All right? I keep saying it, but it's, honestly, it's true. Secondly, uh, when it comes to questions, maybe, because we don't want to be here for the whole night, and I, and I think Tyler's got to go at some point as well. So what we'll do for now, if we have one question each, okay, and, and try to come to the question quickly, <laughs> we, we don't want to have the whole history of your medical history. You're live, by the way, as well. If you want that, then that's up to you. But try and come to the question that you have in mind, and then we can answer it. Okay, so hands up. Let, let, let's get started. Over here. Thank you. Actually, I'm curious. Today, I got actually really inspired to do a water fasting. And uh, it never occurred to me earlier, because generally my health has been really healthy. Um, but part of my belief system is kind of like, aren't, it just goes against everything I've been taught, <laughs> like yeah. nutrients and vitamins. And like, how do you just go on water and how long? <laughs> What's your goal? Just to experience, just to experience uh, it just has been coming in my field a lot. and. People talk about it a lot, and I've been curious. Spiritual growth, physical health. Spiritual growth. Okay, is that kind of like connection, learning, just having an experience, something like this? So what I would say is uh, within 12 hours overnight on water, you'll go into nutritional ketosis, which means your body starts to use a little bit of fat. Within about 17 hours, you'll enter autophagy. At that point, you'll start to feel a little bit like you're hitting a wall, like, oh, I need something to eat. That's when you need to drink a lot of water, drink a lot of the water. You typically, you need a big enough why. If I got a big enough why of like what I'm wanting to do when I'm hungry and feeling like crap because my body's starting to detox, I remind myself of that why and I drink more water, drink more water. Um, learning the basics because like I said, when you start water fasting, it'd be okay for a day or two, not a big deal. But if you decide to do a little bit longer, then your digestive system stops. And so all that beep that's in there is just gonna back up and kind of feel like crap. Uh, so I would say a good place to start would be like three days, one day, do one day and just see how you go. Even a one day break, there are religions that have existed for thousands of years that fast one day every week. It's a day of rest. A day of rest is actually giving the, the rest to the body. It's not just sitting back doing nothing and shoving food in your face because that's a lot of work internally, right? So I, I actually did do 10 days of coconut water fast. But then, awesome. But then my belief there is like, okay, there's some nutrients in the coconut water. Yes. Right? But water only feels like it's not <laughs> nutritious. It feels nutritionally deficient. Right? So, you know, when I say three days, three days is the hardest time because that's the full transition into ketosis, getting all the benefits, the real big detox. So, you know, if you're going to really do a water fast, Five to seven days is a big deal. Uh, autophagy, if you guys don't know what that is, that's when your body starts to self selectively self-digest all the unwanted material like tumors and cysts and viruses and all the bad stuff inside, scar tissue, like all this stuff gets eaten up and cleared out through autophagy. That starts at about 17 hours and it slowly increases, increases, increases until five days. At five days it hits its peak and it starts to kind of taper off a little bit. So. You know, three days is like, I can do three days. That means you can do it. But you're kind of just dealing with the hard yards of a water fast. You might not ever want to do it again. And this is the problem if you don't get really educated and do it properly and maybe in a group. If you have a really bad experience, some people do, then you'll never do it again. Because it becomes a visceral, like, water fasting's bad for me. It's like, no, scientifically, it's good for everyone done correctly and if this is why i run programs because if you have an awesome positive beautiful experience the first time then you'll go do it on your own and you know all the little nuances and things to support the process but i would say if you could get a little bit educated get inspired maybe enroll somebody to do it with you and do like five to seven days there's so many amazing benefits 
five days really isn't going to be dangerous if you get a little bit educated and do it properly. Maybe five days is a good amount. And then eventually a 10-day. So my goal is to do a 10-day water fast every year. So every year I pick a time. That's when I'm going to go out in nature, sometimes in a nice hotel on a beach somewhere. Uh, but 10 days. So we mentioned Socrates. Yeah. Plato, if you look into their history, both Socrates and Plato were known to fast 10 days every year for mental and physical efficiency. That's specifically what it says. So if you're losing a little bit of memory, a little bit foggy, you're physically, uh, I'm not really sure, there's a rejuvenescence. That's the scientific word coined by scientists for what fasting does to all Things, C. elegans, cats, dogs, mice, rats, humans, there's so much research. Rejuvenescence is the ability for an organism to regain youthfulness, okay? With stem cells, like we can actually regenerate ourselves. Telomeres, like all these things, all the science we get super excited about with like wine and resveratrol, you know, and astragalus and all these beautiful herbs that are amazing are like this compared to what fasting actually does. The problem is two things. Fasting is the easiest thing you'll ever do because all you got to do is stop eating. But it's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life because you have to stop eating. And you have all this indoctrination from childhood and trying to build muscle and doing all the things and, oh, I don't want to lose it. And, oh, what about vitamin C and what about protein and what, what blah, blah, blah. man there's such an overwhelm of every nutrient saturated inside your body and my body right now you could go 40 days on a water fast supported correctly no problem at the end of it you'd be really thin but all of your biomarkers would probably show that you were like a 17 year old how old are you 34 okay so a 40 year old male fasted for two weeks on water, according to whole biological laboratories at the University of Chicago, showed, showed every cell in his body reverted back to that of a 17-year-old, 40-year-old, okay? And I'm talking about basic metabolism resets itself. Like, there's so many factors we could get into and talk about scientifically, but to begin with, doing it correctly five days uh, and just make sure there's nothing else you have to do. Say, this is, if you tell your brain, this is five days of rest, it's five days for me, I don't have work, I don't have things and appointments and stuff, and I can go get a massage, and I can just drink water, and I can do if I feel like doing it, but this is, this is me time, that's the way we should approach fasting. Not like, oh, I need to not eat and I'm going to suffer. No, it's rest. It's, this is my time, I'm just going to drink water, drink the right amounts. <laughs> Long answer to a short question. Good one. Exactly. So, yeah, next question. Yeah, yeah. Just grab, grab the, yeah, if you've got your hand up, you're right there. All good. Remember, point, point this one right at your mouth. Yeah. Um, I have so many questions. Choose, um, choose the top one. Yeah. So, um, I have done uh, a lot of fastings. So, one, uh, one of the fastings, what happens is that when I do for many days, like, my body can sleep. It's like, yep. it just seems like it sleeps very little. And yeah, so I'm wondering like how you deal with that. But can I say the questions and then you answer them as you want in the answer. And the other one, it's um, so what to do when a person, like you, you said that you get uh, very extreme cases for fasting, right? Yep. And extreme cases, usually they have... Um, hard time with their health in terms of like low blood sugar, high blood sugar. Can I just answer sugar. your first question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, but the second one Yeah, is more it's important. okay. One question. Okay. okay. So when you start to fast, I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a reference to the Bible, and I'm not going to go through the whole story, but basically what it says is for every day of fasting, you go back one year, and you're actually remissing the sin and 
the, the negativity and the stuff that showed up over the last year. So if I fast one day, I'm clearing the last year. Two days, two years. Five days, five years. Now I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing it for decades, actually. And I notice when people get really sick on the fast, like they might be smooth sailing, everything's great, seven days in, and then all of a sudden they're puking, they're dying, stuff's coming out. And every single time I go to them, like day seven, what happened to you seven years ago? Wow. They think about it and they're like, oh my God, my dad died, I fully got sick, that's exactly what I'm feeling. So there's an emotional processing component to this. So when you can't sleep, that is because all the energy being used here is now freed up. That energy that's freed up is gonna be used for healing. And the reason we need to sleep so much is because of all that energy being used for processing food two, three times a day, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes sense, but I like my sleep, I want my sleep. The best way to utilize that time is self-review, okay? And this could be incorporating somebody else coming in and actually questioning and psychologically going because your body and your mind want to process the negative emotion and the stuff that you've been through and fasting is the time for that. So for me personally, I'm like, I'm going to do a 10-day water fast every year. I go out, I'm laying there, I can't sleep, same thing, first two to three days every single time. I'm wired all night long, but I'm using this. And in that time, I hit something, and I'm literally in the pillow bawling my eyes out because I'm having realizations of how much of a beep head I've been in the past with previous partners and things that I've done where... It's a, it's a self-review. Mm -hmm. And so I have these massive emotional clearing experiences because I actually have the time, but if you don't know this, you're just on TikTok. You're just on Facebook. You're just on Instagram. We're just distracting, distracting. Oh, I can't sleep, what do I do? I need to entertain myself instead of full just laying there in meditation. I got the energy and just allowing, it's not you know Buddhist meditation, it's not Vipassana, it's just like, I'm just going to allow this flow and stream and think about, you know, my mother and my father and my experiences and all of a sudden something will come in. And it's like you'll be guided like you're watching a mental movie of some stuff that needs to come out. And so that's, that's what I do and that's what I try to help people to do when they're fasting. And then, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning <laughs> you'll be tired. You'll go to sleep. So you sleep through the morning if you have to. It's just part of the process. And this is why I also say, like, make sure there's not commitments and things that you have to show up for. Because then if you don't sleep at night and you're totally wiped out and then you got to go do Zoom calls and some other BS, you're not actually doing a water fast mm -hmm. the way it's meant to be done. So second question. And then any more questions, just go and see him. <laughs> yeah. So the but, sick person yeah. coming. Uh, yeah. So you mentioned that you have uh, people that are, are in high risk diseases right yeah. so usually high risk diseases they have like low blood sugar high blood sugar pr blood pressures are yep. like all over the place so then these people when you put them into fasting mode whatever which level they go they usually the body just really has strong uh, reactions right like for example sometimes i tell my parents like oh go and do this yeah but it's like no my blood sugar will go to the floor i will faint Right, so I'm yep. wondering how do you support those type yeah. of people? So it's again this thing like, go tell your mother to run a marathon. You're not the right person to tell her that. You don't know anything about it or how to prep. Hey mom, go do a fast because I read an article. And we all, we all want to be helpful. It's not an attack. No, yeah, but I mean like, what do you do with those type of people? A lot. Yeah. So somebody's going to come to Bali, they're going to fast for, let's say, 20 plus days on water. There's a lot of preparation. I need to see their complete blood chemistry uh, and all their markers, their medical records, and see what's actually happening. Um, and if they have low hemoglobin, low red blood cells, they have low B12, they have certain nutrients that are out of place, they have to get on a nutritional program to build them up for weeks, get another blood test, cool, everything's good, and if everything's within a certain range, we know this person's in a range they can do a week on a water fast. This person's in a range they could do 40 days on a water fast. And sometimes the people who look like they'd be fine actually aren't. And the people who are really sick are. It's actually really interesting. So believe it or not, you know, we've had a lot of stage four cases and metastases and major conditions where people come and they actually fast easily. 
Uh, and, and then we have cases where, you know, they need a lot of support and build up prior. So uh, it's a case by case basis. You have to look at everything, make sure they're safe. Um, yeah. Yeah, and blood, comprehensive blood test, things to look for, make sure your hemoglobin's in a good place and you're not B12 deficient. If you got those two going for you and everything else seems to be in range, you're good. If you have high cholesterol, if you have high CRP or inflammatory type of markers, all those things radically improve on a fast. So it's just a couple little things you need to make sure you're not deficient on and sorted. So thank you for the two great questions. Now behind you, was there a question? Matt, Donnie, was it? Did, did I have one? Now, before you answer, ask the question, so what we're getting, which we discussed before, is that it's no joke, right? People are out there reading on YouTube, Dr. Google, I'm going to do a fast, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But what your base is saying is that there's so much to it, don't do that. Like, go to someone who knows what they're doing yeah. and do all of the tests and the, the indicators before mm -hmm. so you can actually see what your body can support. And right. generally, if you want to do a fast, juices is a really safe route, yeah. unless you're diabetic. But for everything else, it's a really safe route, because if you drink enough, you're getting calories, you're getting nutrients, you have energy, yeah. you feel a little bit better, you still need to support a little bit of detox. But when it comes to water fasting or dry fasting, you really should be educated, because uh, you could hurt yourself if you don't drink enough fluids, if your minerals get imbalanced, or if you're already deficient. Mm. Okay, I have one question which is broken down into two. I <laughs> knew it! I, I knew it's it! It's the same. They can't help themselves. I, just a the smile, I thought, I bet there's two questions wrapped up, wrapped up in one. It's all good. Okay, so um, uh, the first one is, uh, does fasting regenerate stem cells? And if so, at how long into the fasting does that begin? If? Great question. Okay, so there's lots of different kinds of stem cells. The best kind of stem cells are called embryonic style stem cells that have what's called pluripotency. That means if I get this stem cell, it can become any cell inside of the body. This is magical if you have an injury, if you have any type of damage inside of your body. Now, luckily enough, when you fast, you make embryonic style stem cells. It's not regenerating stem cells, it's making new ones. Okay, so who's heard of stem cell therapy where they inject it? You can go somewhere and get injected. Okay, so there was this quadriplegic in New Zealand many years ago, and quadriplegic means you can't move anything from the neck down. They did liposuction. They took his fat, his own fat out of his body, took it into a laboratory, and cultivated embryonic style stem cells from the fat. We have an enzyme inside of us called PKA that doesn't allow the uptake of stem cells, so they gave him a poison that shuts down the PKA, and they inject the stem cells into the injury site, and within 24 hours, this guy was moving his upper body. Wow. That's the power of stem cells. Oh my God. Okay? Now, on YouTube, you can look up Jennifer Ritchie, R-I-T-C-H-I-E. This woman was a paraplegic. She fell off a two-story building. She shattered a couple of vertebrae. They did what's called an iatrogenic surgery, where they cut function in order to save function. So they actually severed her spinal cord. Okay? Iatrogenic surgery means you'll never have function or feeling beyond your injury site. We did a little mini documentary of this woman. My father, cowboy hat, mustache, comes along and says, oh, you know, she's like emaciated. She's skinny. And she's on all these drugs just to poop every day. My father tells her, you need to do an extended water fast. And she had premonitions. She like knew he was coming. She says it on the video. She's like, okay. So she does an extended water fast. I'm talking like a long water fast. She breaks the water fast with the right types of things, and she starts to wiggle her toe. Oh, man. Yeah, impossible, because there's no, there's, there's no spinal cord connection. How do you wiggle your toe? It's impossible. And the doctor's like, oh my God, this is a miracle, but you'll never wiggle another one. And then she starts to wiggle more. They're like, oh my God, this is a miracle, but you'll never wiggle one on the other foot. And then she starts to wiggle it on the other foot. Every step of the way, the medical doctors and physical therapists saying, well, you've done great, but you'll never get to the next level. And she gets to the next level, the next level, the next level. Two years later, ran a marathon unassisted. Oh my God. Like literally got off the crutches and the leg braces. We got a documentary of the whole thing, interviewing the doctor, interviewing the physical therapist. How is this possible? And the physical therapist in the video is like, this is a miracle, this is impossible. And she's like, no, this is science, this is stem cells. 
So to answer your question, it takes 48 hours for most people to use up the glycogen, which you're going to think you're losing muscle. That's just sugar in your muscles. That's just glycogen. It takes 48 hours to lose it. Ketosis fully kicks in. As soon as you're in any ketosis, that's the fast breakdown of fat. Embryonic style stem cells are being generated as soon as you enter ketosis. Okay, so everybody in here will hold about 12 hours of glucose in your liver overnight. So if I stop eating at seven, if I wait till seven in the morning, it's nutritional ketosis. So I woke up this morning and I did five miles walk with my son. Burning off the extra sugar, I'm getting into nutritional ketosis. My body's making embryonic style stem cells. Those stem cells can only be used in my gut. But where do I want them? In my gut. Because the most problems people have is in their digestive system. So anytime you're doing intermittent fasting beyond 12 hours, I'd recommend 16 to 18, there's a little bit of regeneration that's happening inside your gut. But none of those stem cells can be used because of PKA for anything else until the magic 72 hours, PKA naturally shuts off. So now you don't need to be poisoned to shut down the PKA. And my body's been what? Generating embryonic style stem cells for now almost three days. Those stem cells become available to be used for healing and repair. And this is why this woman that did nearly a 40-day water fast completely regenerated her spine. And we've been using this, you know, I, I didn't make this up. Like, it's, you know, I didn't discover this. This has been in the science literature for a long time. I'm super excited about it, as you can tell. I've been super excited about it and telling the same story for years and years and years, and it just appears to go in one ear and out the other for most people because you don't understand what I'm telling you. It means we have the power to regenerate ourselves. Amazing. Injuries, I'm talking knee injuries, ankle injuries, brain injuries, spinal injuries, disease conditions of the lungs and liver and all these things. And if you want to do it safe, again, like a five-day water fast, you're going to start using those stem cells between three and five days and get some of those benefits. And if five days is manageable, you could potentially do a, a five-day water fast every month, every three months, every six months. You know, I've had people with even like really bad eyesight, like glasses, and I tell them, look, you can, get, you can take off those glasses and heal and regenerate your eyes. They're like, oh, BS, you can't regenerate your eyes. It's like every organ in your body regenerates. Every organ right now is trying to do its best to be perfect. The only reason it's not is because the blocked up lymphatic system and things and non-nutritional qualities and whatever. If we get out of the way and we give the body the building blocks and materials, the embryonic style stem cells, it will regenerate. Uh, a friend of mine, John Abbott, here in Bali, met him here in Bali, bigger gut, glasses, went bike riding with him all the time. He's just like, what do I got to do to get rid of this? He had uh, what's called celiac disease. That's like the gluten intolerance thing diagnosed. I said water fasting, told him had this whole spiel. He did, he's like, I'm going to do 10 days every quarter. So he did a 10 day water fast, three months later, 10 day water fast, three months later, 10 day water fast, three months later, one year. He did a 40 day water fast in sections of 10, doesn't wear glasses at all completely lost all the weight, eliminated celiac disease, and started racing downhill mountain biking championship here in Bali, Indonesia, and won. Like, massive transformation. So, check out the YouTube video, Jennifer Ritchie, because it's legit. Like, they're interviewing the doctor and the physical therapist and all of that. And once we start to realize the body can regenerate, then it's just a matter of creating the right situations to support the fasting do it correctly, make sure you're not getting deficient or having an issue, and then doing it consistently. And we can stop the aging process to some degree or reverse it. You know, I know there's part two, but we're running out of time. Um, not that there is time. So question, two things very quick. Um, <laughs> another guy, right, called Tyler, right? Tyler Farnham. You remember him. Tyler Farnham is a guy, Aussie. He's a skydiver. And cut a long story short, he jumped out of a plane his shoe didn't open, got into trouble, experienced skydiver, hit the ground without his shoe opening, right? Two meters away was the grass, so it was the concrete. He landed in the airstrip on the grass, managed to live. Okay, so now this guy's got serious 
problems, right? Because when the body drops uh, 20, 30,000 feet, whatever it is, hits, hits, hits the ground, you're going to be in trouble. So, uh, and one of the things which you told me that's echoing in my head was you said, look, Rob, like um, doctors and so on, they're good with diagnosis, what has happened to you, what you've sustained, what's going on, but not prognosis. I, they can't tell you if you can heal or if you can or if you can't. And the last part of the story was that when he was, in, he was getting depressed, so he reached out to a woman who had something similar happen to her, and she said to him, look, do not focus on what you can't do. Focus on what you can. So whether you can wiggle your toe or wiggle your thing, focus on that. And over the years, look, he's well, he's better, he's running, he's surfing, he's doing all of those things. But he had a miraculous turnaround based upon, again, this idea, not idea, this understanding that the body can do incredible things if you give it a chance. Okay, so we've got time for two more questions. So Carol, we'll, we'll give one to you. There's one over here already, yeah? Go Hi. for it, my darling, yeah. Hi, just quickly. Um, is there too long to detox? Is there too long? Yeah, is it too, is it fasting? I'm sorry, fasting. Is the fasting too long? Oh. Is there, could you do too much? Yeah, could you of do course. too much? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, and it's definitely a problem within my own community because we're all excited about fasting and detoxification. And within my own community, people need to fast from fasting. Because people get caught up in, oh, I need to detox, oh, I need to detox, and I'm on the next cleanse, and now I'm on the next cleanse. It's like, no, you just need really solid structure in your diet and eat enough calories and just eat healthy food and exercise and do all these things for a long period of time. So there's kind of that side of it. And then, of course, like especially on a water fast, essentially it's a water fast. Like You're not receiving any protein. Okay, And it's a, that's a big thing right there. It's like, oh, well... How do you get protein? Because your body doesn't hold protein for more than 24 hours. Like that's a scientific fact. Your body burns it off, becomes ammonia. So it's like, if I don't have protein tomorrow because I'm water fasting, where is it getting it? Tumors, cysts, excess, denatured protein in your kidneys, in your liver, everywhere in your body where it's built up and stored. So you'll hit a point where then it becomes detrimental. Uh, and if you didn't know anything scientifically about it, you would just know when you're at a point that somebody shouldn't be water fasting anymore. That's because they're literally laid down, they can't move, they're completely lethargic. That can happen in a short water fast and it doesn't mean the person is just a major detox. But I know and trained people are know when somebody like is fully flat and they're not as responsive and able to do things, especially for more than 48 hours, then it's a good sign that you need to stop. Uh, heart palpitations that continue or any type of arrhythmia type of thing that continues beyond 24 hours, also probably a potassium deficiency, which means you'd need to get some potassium and change that or you'd have some serious problems. Hyponutremia can be a problem. That's a lack of salt because your body constantly eliminates. So we do use a little bit of salt in the water, typically daily. Um, but yeah, I mean, be smart, do it with a professional, don't go too long. Thank you. This whole conversation is about detoxing for life. And the other part of what Tyler offers is about life medicine and learning to live in a balanced way. So it becomes, yeah, incorporated, yeah. Yeah, maybe intermittent fasting is a great place to start too. Okay, so we have a, a Carol question from you. So I'm going to assume that uh, women and men are different when it comes to fasting, and I'm going to make the assumption that a menopausal woman is a very different uh, um, uh, has a very different profile when it comes to fasting. So. What kind of observations have you made when it comes to the benefits of fasting for menopausal women? And are there things that you shouldn't do? Are there things that you should do? Um, what kind of benefits have you observed? Yeah. So the first, first thing I say is the first part of that word menopause is the main problem. Men. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a joke. Give men a pause. <laughs> That's what I heard. Give, Give men, men a, a pause. Men on pause. All right. Okay, men no problem. Pause. I got it. Bit harsh, Tyler. Yeah. No, the truth is, uh, the truth is, 
women prior to menopause actually need to be a little bit more careful with the production of hormones from proteins and so around ovulation and just prior to period period time, there needs to be kind of an increase in calories to maintain that health. When you go into an extended fast, it's a full reset of the endocrine system, so that's okay. Uh, but women will lose their period for probably three to six months. They'll probably have uh, a little bit of hair that appears to be like coming out. It's just resetting. So, you know, in the brush, there's just more hair and, oh my God, I'm losing all my hair. But then within two months, it'll come back fuller and better. Uh, menopausal women actually handle fasting better than pre-menopausal women. And I would say you'd probably get a lot more benefits from it. In general, it might not be a liked statement, but there really shouldn't be any symptoms or things that show up going into menopause for women. Um, typically, if there is something that's out of whack with hormones or a health problem to begin with, when you go into menopause, then you have hot flushes and all these negative experiences. But that's typically because, like I said, of potentially a toxic or an imbalance already taking place, of which the fasting will correct. Um, a lot of times for women, I've observed, especially with fertility issues and reproductive issues, uh, there's a specific kind of juice called Kabbalah, carrot, apple, beet, apple, lemon, apple, with three different colors of apples. <laughs> and you fast on that juice for one uh, moon cycle for 28 days. And that has a profound effect for women for whatever reason. I could go deeper into the story as to why, but I just don't have time for that. So, you know, it could be something to look at maybe doing an extended juice fast instead. Uh, where, uh, where water fasting really shines is in the, the cancer. And that's because of the specific qualities of autophagy. So when you water fast, you're gonna get autophagy and you're gonna get uh, stem cells, okay? Juicing, that will never happen. Well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say it'll never happen. There's no science that supports autophagy from a juice fast because you're still glycating the cell, you're still getting all the sugars and all the nutrients. So it's, you know, a juice fast really isn't fasting at all. It's feasting, like you're feasting on tons of nutrients, like you can never eat that many fruits and vegetables. Um, and yeah, I think in some cases it'd be good to explore that if you have a specific outcome you're looking for. Doing an extended juice fast, making sure you're drinking lots and having enough and having energy, and then maybe if it doesn't get the goal you're looking for, maybe explore the water side of things. Ooh. Wow, wonderful. So what we're going to do, uh, so as I said before, right, usually we have a panel of four, but we didn't need that today. It's like a panel of one. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, don't apologize. It's fantastic, you know, and it's been a personal joy for me as well to kind of have this whole experience of meeting your dad, now meeting you, and getting some of those, those things that, that clearly come from both, right, that, that you both have in common. So what we're going to do as we begin to wrap up is, uh, so we'll have some, some final words. And so we'll have some final words from, from you in about a minute or so, uh, then Tracy, and then we'll, then we'll close it from there. So until that time, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's come, who's watching online. Uh, you really should come in person because a, a person like, like this, you've got to meet him up live. You've got to meet him up close and personal, even better. And saying that, yes, he's saying yes. Uh, a, a new dad, I'm, I'm so appreciative of that as well as, as I'm sure you are. Wonderful. Five, oh, wonderful. Got a five week old. Haven't slept in five weeks. Five weeks. All How right. am I looking? <laughs> Next week, uh, we have a, an incredible uh, Indonesian. Uh, she has done some phenomenal things in the world of plastic local knowledge, local education uh, for Indonesians as well as foreigners. So she'll be, she'll be in and that'll be a one-on-one -on -one interview. She's phenomenal, a powerful, beautiful woman. So look forward to that. And the next, I mean, on Friday, Tracy, you have an event uh, for Health Hub. So what we'll do is uh, I'll divert to you, let them know what the Friday event is, what time they can come after we hear from Tyler. 
So over to you to see us out, then we'll go to Tracy and then we'll wrap from there. So what do you want me to say? So oh, just yeah. any final kind of closing words something that you think might be important for people here to kind of listen to or to take note of or to go home with, okay. maybe a little practice. Yeah, cool. Uh, I think a morning routine is super important. Um, getting up maybe a little earlier than you want to. <laughs> it's quiet time. I love morning because nobody else is up when I get up. 3.30. Yeah, I'm a little bit psycho on that one. I get up at 3.30 or 4 every single morning, and it's just all of Bali is completely quiet. So on like an energetic, spiritual, and just physical level, it's me time. So I take my time to really wake up and just kind of get what I want to get out of the morning. And then I immediately hydrate. I drink lemon water, uh, and I walk five miles uh, every morning, three to five miles every morning. Uh, my son, for the past five weeks has been keeping mom awake all night, so she needs me to be up early and take him for a couple hours and just give her some rest. Uh, but a morning routine is where it's at. If you start your day in a really good place, you'll probably have a great day. Uh, water is important. Believe it or not, drink it. Make sure it's clean. Uh, you can radically upgrade your water with just simply telling it you love it. Add a little bit of lemon. I add like a full lemon. First thing in the morning, it helps detoxify your liver. Lemons have something called anions, so they're the only nutritional thing that support liver detoxification. Um, yeah, drink water and walk, and then go poop. Get rid of yesterday's beep, and move on, and have a great day. Um, if you want to find out more about me and what I do, um, I have a program starting on Friday. It's called Academy. It's a 10-day program where I teach coaches. So I teach iridology, sclerology, anatomy, and physiology, and then teach the methods by which I've been supporting people through fasting. It is very heavy detoxification and healing focused, but there is a lot of like, you know, there's seven principles of health that are essential to life. It's air, water, sunshine, exercise, whole foods, relationships, and passion. And if you're focused on all of those seven and designing your life, you'll have a really good life. Um, and if you miss one or two, you might have problems and not sure why. And, you know, it, like I said, there's seven principles, which are foundational pillars. I've met people that do everything perfect, but they just never thought about getting in the sun. And they literally are almost dead because of their vitamin D levels. And, you know, we're so rammed full of don't get in the sun, don't get in the sun, sunscreen, it causes cancer. Like, you need vitamin D. You need melanin. And I could go off for hours on these things. Um, but, yeah, I, I teach courses, uh, educational stuff. I do free web events. I got one tomorrow night, Simple Principles. <laughs> so show up. We got a free community of people. Um, and I'd love to come hang out and do more stuff in person. I think, actually... Yeah, this is the first event I've done in three years with live people. Yeah. Three years is the first one. Woo. Awesome. So thank you guys. You're, you're special and dear to my heart. <laughs> Love it. So Tracy, over to you. Thank you, my brother. Yes. I just um, was thinking about creating a, a life worth living is another thing we can probably do here in Bali based on these principles. Because what we need now is places and spaces, and that's what Bali, with its health tourism model, um, is setting up places that uh, we can start practicing these habits. And people then can gradually synergize into life. Sometimes, especially if there's a de disease or diagnosis, what they've found is that um, at first to reset and restore the health after detoxing, there's a period of um, every three months coming back to Bali and a model of spending 10 days and then help by the coaches to synergize into life the different habits. It takes about one year. So that's where some of the experts... So we're saying, why Bali? I think you know why Bali. Yeah, yeah. And it's the, it's the energy and also having the... Um, what would I say? The hospitals now wanting to work along and create something there that we can create really a new model of health where they have the proper testing and they also learn this way how to um, guide people, which the Balinese doctors is integral to them anyway. But And they already have the science, but now how to make it practical. The hospital we're working with at the moment, they also have um, a retreat space. They're super keen to create a um, world-class 
way of healing and um, within the Health Hub platform, um, the ones that are living here and working, that we can start incorporating this model. Friday, 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 Friday. And Friday's all about information. So Tyler's about information, we're about information and sharing it and then connecting you to the places where you can get it. So we also have a, a team of doctors who are working as concierge, like to give information, who are keen to um, share that. Uh, each week, uh, not each week, at the moment, uh, two Fridays a month, we have uh, experts there and we have a schedule. So mainly just particularly through Instagram, just message and we can uh, share who's there that can answer your questions. Great. So thank you, uh, Health Hub Bali. If you're wondering, that's Instagram. <laughs> Tyler Tolman, Tracy, Health Hub Bali. See you next week. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>